part we talked about botanical garden as one of the taxonomic aids. Now we will talk about few more. So the second one which we are talking about is zoological parks or zoological gardens which are commonly known as a zoo. Now what exactly is a zoo? We all are aware of it. It is an enclosed place where normally wild animals are placed and the purpose of having again this type of a place where people can go and study is one purpose. So it is again scientific study of these animals plus there is one more very very important thing which can be achieved here and that is protection of the endangered endangered animals. These animals can be placed here. There are uh, animals which are or there are certain species of animals which come in the category of endangered. Now uh, what happens is they may get extinct in wild but can still be uh, conserved or protected in captivity. That means they are kept in these zoos where extra precaution is taken all proper habitat like situations are maintained so that these animals can be uh, maintained and they can survive here. Plus the awareness uh, point is also that people education of people to educate people that is also one uh, purpose of these kind of uh, places and then there is recreation that means the entertainment part is also there. So that is why we have these zoological parks or zoological gardens or which are commonly known as zoos. Third type of aid is a museum. What exactly is again a museum? It is again a place and here preserved plants and animals are placed. So this is the place where the preserved organisms are placed. Now how are they can be or how are they preserved? Normally plants and animals they are specimen in the form of specimen that is dry and preserved specimen. Insects like especially butterflies and moths because studying of the color pattern that they have is again very important in identification thing. So what is done is those butterflies, they are dry, their wings are spread out and then they are pinned. So the way these uh, animals are preserved or kept in a museum is basically dry and pinned. Then there are some large animals. Large animals they are preserved by stuffing them. So what is done is all organs and soft tissue is removed. The skeleton and the skin is kept as it is. It is treated and it is stuffed. So these animals are preserved as stuffed animals. So this helps us get the complete idea of their size, their external appearance. Suppose we have a preserved specimen of a tiger so we also get to see how the stripes or what kind of patterns do they have on their skin. So again it is for study purpose. Another thing which can be kept in the museum skeleton. They can be fossils which can also be placed in these museums. Again the purpose is scientific study so that when we visit these places we get a complete idea of the size of the animal, the pattern of that animal's fur and everything. So museum also acts as one important taxonomic aid. The next one which we are talking about is a herbarium. Herbariums are collections of 
right, pressed and mounted, planch. Now this is done in a very technical manner. The plant which is to be preserved has to be first dried properly so that all the parts are properly separated so that each and every structure is visible. Then it is pressed between filter paper so that the complete water is lost because if water remains in the tissue, the tissue is going to decompose, degenerate, fungus is going to grow on it. So drying process is also very technical and then these dried plants are mounted on paper sheets. Now these paper sheets on which the plants are mounted, they have a standard size. Now the size is 29 centimeters by 43 centimeters. This is the standard size, but North American standard size is slightly different. It is 29 by 41.5 centimeters. But otherwise, except for this North American standard, all in all other places, the size is going to be 29 into or that is 43 centimeters. So this is the standard sheet which we use for making a herbarium. So this is going to be a collection. Now suppose here we place a plant. So this plant is properly dried and all its parts are properly spaced out, roots and everything is visible. Then in the right lower corner, the complete description of this plant has to be here. So here it's going to be all the description. Now the description has to have the local name, local name, scientific name, the location from where it has been collected, location from the place where the plant has been collected, the name of the collector and any other additional information which can be provided like the natural habitat from where it was taken and so on and so forth. So all this information has to be there including dates and everything. The date of collection. So all that information is going to be in this corner. So when we open that herbarium sheet, we look at the plant dried specimen also and at the same time we also get the complete description of that plant on that same sheet. So this helps the students who are studying these plants. So if they find a plant in some locality, they can refer to these herbarium sheets or these herbariums so that they can find out whether this plant has already been studied or not. Is it a new species which they have found out? Because if it is described here, that means somebody has already described, studied it and the description is available here. So herbarium is also a very, very important taxonomic aid. So we have seen four taxonomic aids so far. In the next part, we'll talk about some more, like what exactly is a manual, what is a monograph, and what exactly is a key. These ones we will take up in the next part.